All right, guys, Damon at Black Warrior Lures. Thanks to all of you who've uh, shown some interest in the new course of building the uh, the uh, the Triple CR79 uh, multi-purpose, you know, catfish rod or whatever we're going to call the daggum thing. First thing you want to do is you want to take some measurements, body measurements. You want to take a tape measure, all right, and it's a custom-built rod, so why not custom-build it to your body instead of just having to use whatever somebody at some factory in some other part of the world decided that you wanted, right? How do they know? They don't. Take a tape measure, put it in the middle of your palm of your hand, close that, and measure it all the way back here to your elbow. And I usually go ahead and wrap it around like that too. Like You can go ahead and wrap it around, that's fine. And so that's like 17 inches, right? That's the first measurement. Second measurement is just like it. Palm of the hand there, and all the way back to your, your, basically in the middle of your armpit, really, you know, um, or, or you know, basically to where the um, where the where your deltoids meet your the chest muscle, where they right there in that little cavity there. And you see that's 24 inches. So if you were to say, okay, between 17 inches and 24 inches, what what's the you can average those two numbers. And somewhere right around the middle of that would be about, um, you know, 20, 20 and a half inches. You know, 24 inches and 17, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. That's like uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So 1, 2, 3, 4. Yeah, if you average that out, about 21 inches or so. So we made a 21 inch handle on that that would be a very comfortable thing because you have that distance there a good fighting strength a good fighting length good for accurate casting and things like that and that gives to me another point to me if you build say an if you want a six foot rod well if I want a six foot rod and I'm taking those measurements and, and I have almost two feet of handle well, that six foot rods all of a sudden looking like a four foot rod just in the handle, right? Especially if you're talking 17, 18, 20, 24 inches, right along in there. You know, so if I want to fish with six feet, you know, I need an eight foot rod at least, <laughs> right? And we don't see anybody, you know, taking measurements like that, except, you know, some European where they actually do, you know, have ridiculously long handles and very, very long rods. But anyway, that's, a, that's part of what I do that. So take, Again, recap, take your first measurement, center of the palm of the hand, all the way to the elbow, like so, and then from the center of the palm of the hand all the way to where the deltoid and the bicep and all that and the chest muscle kind of intersect, you know, and then you just take an average, you know, somewhere in the middle between those two numbers. That's why I would recommend that you make your handle, and that's the first step. Tell you what, let's go on back into the house and order some parts and I'll show you how I do that all right so well, I went back in the house and the old camera's not working so we're gonna go do the uh, uh oh lost something there rod parts here um, I'll have this so you can download it print it out it's a PDF and uh, and you can just read through it. Uh, let me just go through it. The, 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 this rod is going to be a light tackle rod, long limber, eight pound test maximum, four pound test minimum. Probably split the difference, use six pound test most of the time. Uh, I'm going to use it for float fishing, uh, for drifting, back bouncing with light tackle, light weights, light gear along the river beds uh, on the Black Warrior River. To catch a multi-species of fish, uh, you know, channel catfish, bluegill, spotted bass, even some crappie. Uh, you may even hook into the striped bass every now and again. But the, the, the main point is to catch, is to mostly target bluegill and channel catfish, the occasional spotted bass and crappie, depending on just what's going on. What we're going to use is a number six fly weight rod. This is sort of the parts list. We're going to use a number seven weight well, fly rod blank, preferably nine foot. You know, I like fly rod blanks because they're light. They make good light spinning rods. They cast well. They're good casting rods. The thing I don't like about crappie rods is they don't cast well. They're just mostly designed for jigging. 
So I want a good casting rod that I can jig and drag and drift and use just basically every technique that can be used, whether it's set lining, trolling, drifting, dragging, jigging, casting, lobbing, pitching, anything. It's got to be able to do every single cast or presentation possible. And I figure nine foot, seven weight fly rod, you know, anything less than a seven weight will be a little bit too light. I mean, this is a five, six weight that I have here. I like it, it's fun, but it's just a little too light. Um, and we'll talk about something else. Real seat, uh, I'm gonna go with a 17 millimeter. The one I did last year with the, this is an 18 millimeter real seat, fits the, fits a number 40 or 4,000 size reel pretty well. I'm gonna be using a number 20, but I don't want a 16 millimeter so I, because I, I do wanna use the larger one occasionally as well. So I'm probably gonna split the difference between a 16 millimeter and an 18 millimeter. Gonna go graphite because it's light. 17 millimeter real seat and I have links to all of it and, and so you can go, uh, but that's why. I like to hold the rod here all the time. You know, let's see, let me show you here. I like to always hold the rod right there. I don't put my hands up here or back here because I'm a fly fisherman at heart and your hands are always almost in the same position all the time. So that's how I do that. My hand is always like that on the on the rod. And so, and so that aluminum is cold. We're gonna go graphite so we can our hands can stay warmer. So that's how I do that. Another thing, I'm using the, the reel, you know, you're gonna use a 2,000 to 4,000 size reel. You know, and, and in this case, I'm probably gonna just go ahead and just use the um, the ABF, ABF, uh, Okuma ABF 20B. Probably use the 40 as well. Yeah, where I can put four pound test on here, and on the 40, I can use the six and eight pound test and then just switch out the reels, however. And because the 40 has uh, an additional spool, so I can have all three line sets accounted for and ready to go at any time, or I just may buy two more spools for that thing, spool them up and be ready to go at any time I want. Just whatever you want to do. Uh, we're going to use a combination of double foot guides and single foot guides. Uh, I don't have a, I may put a video on the, the what I did last year. Uh, I like double foot guides because they're easy to tie, they're easy to secure on the rod. We're going to be using a different color thread. This is some really ugly thread I had. But we're going to use double foot guides all the way up to perhaps the last one or two, which will switch to a single foot guide for both the first one and the tip top. And uh, and I'll and we'll get to that later on in the course or whatever. Those are the guides. Uh, I'll be using a number 30, a number 16, and a number 8. I what I do is I use two big guides down here on the bottom. And these are really a lot smaller than they should be. I use a big one here, a big one here to gather the line very quickly and then just shoots it out to the tip and I have the same size all the way out to the tip. Right? So if we got a nine foot rod, that means nine, generally nine guides plus the tip top. So I'll have a number 30, a number 16, and then eights all the way out to the tip, which will also be a number eight. All right, and that's how that works. Uh, another overview, let's see, what do we do? Handle, yeah, that's my favorite part probably. Um, I use cotton rope for a handle. I, mean, I don't use cork. I don't like cork, and I don't like, and I really don't like EVA foam. I use quarter inch cotton rope, as you can see. It's just, in a, and I have that uh, epoxied on there. Quarter inch cotton rope, and again, my hand's here all the time have the extra handle here I can cast really well nice long handle remember the measurements look at look at how it measures here all the way from there just past my elbow a little bit remember how I was saying average the distance between the mid center of the palm of your hand to your elbow and to uh, the joint here that's just past my elbow we're probably gonna go ahead and make the next handle just a slap bit longer here and probably move the real seat from here to about right here instead of there but it's in your own preference and I probably won't use the thread all the the rope all the way out I'll probably just have a little bit here at the end so I could cast so I won't use as much uh, rope next time but that's okay um, that but that adds a nice balance to it 
It has a lot more weight back here. This is varnished in. And uh, that's how I like to do that. You know, it's just much easier. It looks a lot better to me than anything else. Um, next thing is you're going to need some U40 rod bond for the real seat. Some Createx airbrush paints to paint the tip, which I did there, but I never did varnish it. Um, as you can see here, I probably will extend that on down probably the first foot or so. And you use Boat Builder's epoxy to secure the threads here. Excuse me, and then you're going to use some um, spar varnish to paint over that because these are already deteriorating under the sun. They won't last much longer. Um, you know, but uh, that's okay. In fact, we may just need to go ahead and just disassemble this rod all together and just uh, build a new rod with these old eyes. But we'll see. And some nylon embroidery thread used for the for the guides. I, I recommend embroidery thread because it's it looks good. It's strong. It's it's it wraps easily. Nice thick thread and. Um, yeah, when it comes to thread, I don't use anything fancy. I just use this stuff that I already have. Hook keeper, I'm going to make out of the basically the same wire, more or less, that I use in my floats. And uh, probably do a drop shot hook keeper as well as a traditional hook keeper so that we can have a way to keep that drop shot. As you can saw right here, when I pick this thing up, it just ripped the lead right off. So we need a way to secure the drop shot on there. And that is a summary of the parts list and of how I make, will make the uh, triple CR79, the channel catfish chum rod. It's a rod that's, you know, again, you're meant to chum up the area you're going to fish and then you use a variety of techniques to either drift back through the chum or cast into the chum, wherever you're doing a uh, long limber rod that makes the fishing fun. And uh, with that, I will see you guys next week when we hopefully should have our parts in and begin building.